everyone, today we are reviewing linear equations in one variable. So as an example, we could look at the equation 2x plus 3 equals 5. In this example, you probably know that you would need to subtract 3 on both sides in order to cancel out this plus 3 on the left hand side. We have to perform the same operation on both sides to keep that equation balanced. That's what the equal sign tells you, that the left hand side and the right hand side are balanced with each other. After we subtract 3 from both sides, we get 2x remaining on the left hand side and 5 minus 3 equals 2 on the right hand side. Then if I needed to isolate x, I see that is being multiplied by 2, so the opposite operation would be to divide by 2, and I need to perform that same operation on both sides of the equal sign to keep it balanced. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so it's technically a 1 times x equals 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the answer is x equals 1. We say that it has a unique solution, meaning that it has one solution. Now there are situations where you could have no solution or infinitely many solutions. This next problem is an example of a problem where you would have no solution. After I solve this problem, I end up with a false statement. So let's walk through that. 6x minus 1 equals 3 times the quantity of 2x plus 5. Here I see that there's a 3 on the outside of the parentheses, so I know I can distribute that 3 by multiplication to everybody inside. So I end up with 6x minus 1 on the left hand side because nothing changed, and then 3 times 2x is 6x, that's how I got the 6x here, and 3 times positive 5 is positive 15, so that's how I knew to add 15. Then it looks like I have 6x on both sides, so I can actually cancel out the 6x's on both sides by subtracting a 6x. And that's how I ended up with just negative 1 on the left hand side and 15 on the right hand side. Again, that is a false statement because negative 1 is not equal to 15. So whenever you have a false statement, that tells you that you have no solution. So this problem has no solution because nothing is going to work in order to balance that left-hand side and that right-hand side. So again, if there is an answer, it's one solution. False statement, that means there's no solution. All right, now here is an example of a problem where you have infinitely many solutions. 10 plus x minus 2 equals 4x plus 8 minus 3x. In this situation, um, they basically got rid of 4x, well not got rid of, but they simplified 4x and negative 3x. 4x minus 3x is equal to 1x, so that's how they simplified it to just x. 10 minus 2 is equal to 8, so that's how they got 8 on the left hand side. So everything just got reduced to x plus 8 on the left hand side, and also x plus 8 on the right hand side. These x's can cancel out, and then you end up with 8 equals 8, which is a true statement. If you end up with a true statement, that means that the answer is infinitely many solutions. So no matter what value you replace instead of x, you're going to end up with a true statement. It's going to work for any value. We'll talk more in future lessons about what that actually means, but know that there are three different types of solutions. We can have 
a unique solution where x or your variable is equal to one actual amount. You can have no solution where you get a false statement and there's no answer, essentially. And, or you can have infinitely many solutions where any value can work for that variable. All right, let's move on then and take a look at this problem. Solve the equation 10 minus 3 fourths x equals negative 2. Pause the video and try it on your own first on your paper. All right, so I'm going to solve this problem 10 minus 3 fourths x equals negative 2. Remember my whole entire goal at the end is to isolate my x to figure out the answer for x. So I'm going to start working on my left hand side since that's where my x is. And I'm going to start outwards. So I'm going to start with the 10. This is technically a positive 10. So to get rid of it, I need to subtract 10 on both sides. I'm going to draw a line down the middle to show my left hand versus right hand. This positive 10 subtract a 10 cancels out. So I end up with negative 3 fourths x left over on the left hand side equals negative 2 minus 10 is negative 12. So keep in mind this negative belongs to the 3 fourths x and not to the 10. There's nothing in front of the 10, so we can assume it's positive. Be very careful there. That's a common mistake that people make. All right, next up, I'm very close now. I just have one more step left. X is being multiplied by negative 3 fourths. It's multiplication because there's literally no sign between the fraction and the variable. Whenever that happens, it's an invisible multiplication sign. So this is not a minus, this is a negative for the fraction. So I'm going to need to multiply by its reciprocal, which is negative 4 thirds. Multiply both sides by negative 4 thirds. That means that these negatives cancel out, the 4s cancel out, and the 3s cancel out. So I end up with x on its own, and then I have negative 12 times negative 4 thirds. I'm going to put a 1 on the bottom of 12 so that I see that it's the denominator. The 3 and the 12 can be reduced to 4, so this ends up being negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16. So you should have gotten positive 16. Here is another problem on your own if you wanted to try 4 minus 2 thirds x equals 9. But we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at this next problem. This problem says to solve the equation 3 times the quantity of 2y plus 1 divided by 4 minus 5 equals 2y. Go ahead and pause your video and try that one on your own first. All right, the first thing I notice in this problem is that I have a fraction right here. I have 4 uh, for my denominator. So I personally want to get rid of that. I'm going to rewrite the problem here. That was a y instead of an x. 2y plus 1 divided by 4 minus 5 equals 2y. So I want to get rid of this denominator of 4. So what I'm going to do is actually multiply the entire equation by 4, the whole number 4. The 4 is on top as the numerator. I have to multiply the entire equation by 4 because remember, this is an equal sign right here. It means that my left-hand side has to be equal to my right-hand side. So I can't just multiply my left-hand side by 4 and not my right-hand side because that's going to make it unequal. So if I multiply the 
left hand side by a number I have to do that to the right hand side as well and vice versa okay so once I do that then I can reduce this fraction down to 1 and 1 so then that essentially gets rid of the, the denominator for this this chunk right here so then I can just copy down 3 times the quantity of 2y plus 1 because that's what's left over. Now keep in mind this minus 5 is a different term. So this 4 doesn't disappear for the minus 5. It also doesn't disappear for the 2y. So I still need to multiply 4 times negative 5 and I get negative 20 or minus 20 left over from this term. And then 4 multiplied by 2y to get 8y left over on the right hand side. Okay, so the only 4 that um, it disappears or cancels out is this denominator here. And now I've gotten rid of that denominator, I can solve this problem normally. And normally if I have a number or sorry a number on the outside of my parentheses I can distribute so I end up with 6y plus 3 because all the terms inside the parentheses have to be multiplied by 3 this minus 20 stays the same and the 8y stay the same I then have two uh, constants inside I can Combine 3 minus 20 is negative 17 or minus 17 equals 8y. Then I can subtract 6y on both sides. That cancels. I end up with negative 17 equals 2y. I'm going to move that over here because I ran out of room. Negative 17 equals 2y. So then at the end, that would be divided by 2 to get the y by itself. That cancels, so I end up with 1y equals negative, what's half of 17? Well, half of 16 is 8, so this would be negative 8 and a half, because it's just one more. So I get y equals negative 8 and a half. Or negative 8.5 is what they wrote here. Okay, here is another problem that you can try on your own. 7 minus 2 times the quantity of 5 minus 2w all over 3 equals 2w. All right, now one last problem we're going to go over is this one right here. 3 times the quantity of x plus 3 divided by 2 minus the quantity of x minus 2 divided by 5 equals 1. Here you have two different uh, denominators. So again, we know we're going to need to multiply both sides by a number. See if you can figure out what that number would be to get rid of both 2 and 5 together at the same time. So pause the video and try it on your own first. All right, so I'm going to rewrite the problem up here. 3 times the quantity of x plus 3 divided by 2 minus x minus 2 divided by 5 equals 1. So again, my challenge to you is to figure out which number you can multiply the entire equation by to get rid of 5 and 2 together. Because again, you could multiply it by 2 and then get rid of the 2 and then the next step multiply it by 5 to get, then get rid of the 5 but we want to think of a more efficient way so I can think of a multiple a common multiple between 2 and 5 and that would be 10 because both 2 and 5 go into 10 so it's going to help me get rid of these denominators quicker 10 and 2 10 divided by 2 is 5. So I can go ahead and cancel this out and it becomes 5 times the quantity of 3 times x plus 3. I know there's a lot of parentheses but don't worry it's all multiplication anyways so don't freak out about that. 
next 10 over 5 is 2, so this becomes minus 2 times the quantity of x minus 2. Notice how I put that in parentheses because this 2 is going to be multiplied by the entire numerator. So I don't just want to multiply it by x. I have to remember later on that I need to multiply this 2 by the other term inside as well to keep it balanced. And then this 10 is being multiplied by the 1. So you end up with 10 on the right hand side. So again, we chose 10 because it's a common multiple between 2 and 5. And then it crossed out, it reduced the 10 and 2 reduced to 5, multiply the entire inside by the 5. That's why we use the parentheses. Same with the 10 over 5 is reduced to 2, multiply the entire inside by that 2. Okay, so now we have this and we're going to do the work. So we have 5 times the quantity of this 3 is being multiplied by everybody inside. 3 times x plus 3 times 3 is 9 minus this 2, this negative 2, is being multiplied by everybody inside. So minus 2x, negative times negative is positive 4 equals keep the 10 as it was. Then I have one more distribution. 5 is being multiplied by everybody inside. 15x. 5 times 9 is 45. Minus 2x plus 4 equals 10. Okay, now we combine our x's and our constants together. 15x minus 2x is 13x. 45 plus 4 is 49 equals 10. I can subtract the 49 from both sides. I'm running out of room there. And I get 13x equals negative 39 because it's negative 49 and a positive 10. Then I divide both sides by a positive 13. That cancels out on the left-hand side to just get x. Negative 39 divided by positive 13 is a negative 3. So I end up with x equals negative 3. Okay, you probably also noticed that since this is both multiplication, the 5 and the 3, you could have combined that to be 15 and then just multiply the 15 by everybody inside to get the 15 x and the 45 okay so i could have made that shorter but i didn't i just did it separately you get the same answer though all right so here we go the answer is negative three and then if you wanted to work on one extra problem here's another example n divided by four minus 2 times the quantity of n minus 5, all divided by 3, equals 2. 